Imagine you're walking down a corridor in an abandoned old house. The floor creaks below your footsteps. The place is majestic yet old and decrepit. As you enter the next room, you find yourself in a dining room, dimly lit by a small fireplace. You walk across the marble floor, the only noise being the ticking of the grandfather clock in the corner of the room. As you near the fireplace, you see a small, strangely shaped hole above it, almost as if something fits in there. A sudden flash of lightning lights up the room, the calls of crows echo outside, the wind howling. Startled, you jump back and accidentally smash an expensive vase. You see in its broken remains something shiny and pick it up. It's a small red jewel, the same shape as the hole above the fireplace. You place it inside and hear a mechanism as the grandfather clock next to you slides to one side, revealing a small hole. You reach inside and slowly pull out a key. This is just what you need to escape. So if you've played any Resident Evil game, well, apart from maybe one or two, then you'll know the franchise is known for its wacky video gamey puzzles like the one I just described. Pick up this crest to unlock the door. Read the file to find out the order of buttons to press. Switch to similar objects around Indiana Jones style. Puzzle solving is a key aspect of the Resident Evil gameplay, at least to me, and I absolutely love it. So I decided to, to do this video to focus on the best puzzles in the series. Please note this is my opinion and not meant to represent what everyone thinks. So if you agree or disagree, please say it in the comments below. I'd be very much interested in knowing what puzzles in the series you like, or if puzzle solving is an aspect of Resident Evil you wish Capcom would leave behind. With that being said, let's crack on with the top 10 Resident Evil puzzles. Starting off, we have a puzzle from the very first game in the series, and its remake. So quite a ways into the game you find the guardhouse, and inside the guardhouse you'll find a room with a bunch of chemicals and a few empty containers. To get inside, you first have to figure out a code to unlock the door, which requires exploring a room full of giant spiders, and either examining a pool table, or lighting up lamps and matching up the symbols in the remake. Whilst exploring the guardhouse, you might have found a file which describes a chemical called V-Jolt, which is capable of killing Plant 42, a large carnivorous plant that has grown throughout the guardhouse and is the second boss of the game. You may have seen its roots in the basement whilst exploring. Whilst playing as Chris, you'll be doing this puzzle as Rebecca, and is mandatory for his side of the story, whilst dual players will have the option to do this puzzle or not. Doing it, however, may mean that you get to skip the fight against Plant 42. Luckily, no chemistry is needed for this puzzle, because someone has very kindly written on the wall exactly what chemical numbers to add together to create it. Which is why I've ranked it as number 10, as the solution is just somewhat given to you. After creating the V-Jolt, you then have to backtrack to the basement to use it. I'll admit Resident Evil Zero isn't that high up on my list of favourite Resident Evil games. I find it a bit tedious in its mechanics. That being said, I think the game has some great puzzles, and if I had to pick one as a standout for myself, it would be the animal statue puzzle in the basement. So when you get to the basement of the training facility, you find a room full of eliminators, those annoying zombie primates, and also a circle of animal statues. I know some people hate this puzzle, but I quite like it. It revolves around lighting up the statues in order to progress and open up the gate. Each statue has a plaque with a saying etched into it, and if you read them carefully, you'll notice which animal outdoes which. And so you have to light up the statues from weakest to strongest. The key here is to pay close attention to the wording. For example, the tiger statue says, it's the king whilst the snake statue says its venom can take down even the mightiest of kings, and therefore the snake is stronger than the tiger. By reading each statue carefully, you can work out the order solution of the puzzle. And if you need the hand with the last one, the statue actually shows you a snake in the eagle's claws, so there's that too.
Revelations 2, I feel, is a underrated game. For what it was, a small budget spin-off title, it did the job. The game felt a lot closer to RE than the previous main entry, RE6, and one aspect of that was the puzzles. Revelations 2 had some surprisingly good puzzles, and there was one that had me stuck for a bit. So in Claire's episode 3, you go to a factory where the overseer has set up some dangerous tests for Claire and Moira to pass through in order to find their colleague slash boss, Neil. Inside the factory, you'll find a retinal scanner, which requires an eyeball to unlock. You'll find said eyeball in another room, being held by statue, but when you try to take it, a trap is unleashed. A very resy thing to do. The only way to stop the trap is to put the eyeball back, or something almost identical. The old switcheroo puzzle has been done before in Resident Evil, it was used a few times in Resident Evil 1, but what makes this puzzle interesting is that to progress, you have to play a game of chicken with the game. There's a second statue with a key in it, and no way to seem to get it out. Instead to retrieve it, you have to brave out the spike ceiling coming down until it destroys the statue and drops the key. For me, I found this quite an inventive way of solving this little puzzle. Then there's the next part of the puzzle, after using the key, which involves a big room with a replica eyeball at the end. There's a security system guarding it ready to shoot anyone who steps on the floor however. Using Moira's flashlight, a fun little gimmick in the game, you can see the correct path to the eye. This whole section was a really fun experience for me, and it's probably one of my favourite moments in the game. You Come on, let's just get out of here. The original Resident Evil 3 is my favourite game in the series, period. It's probably because it was the first RE game I played and therefore the game I have the most nostalgia for, but it's also due to the memorable puzzles this game has. One of the best puzzles in the game for me personally is the music box puzzle located in the clock tower section. This is mostly due to the song that plays that will be forever ingrained into my mind. As you go around the clock tower as Jill, you will find several music boxes that play slightly different tunes. Then as you enter the top room of the clock tower, where the bell mechanism is, you'll find another music box that you can operate. By choosing where the pings go, you can change the tune of the song, and the goal is to make it match the song you hear at the start. It's not a particularly hard puzzle, but it's very different to anything Resi has done before or since. And nostalgia is probably a reason why it's made the list. There's a lot of discussions to whether the original RE2 is better or the RE2 remake is better. I'm not really going to go into it in this video or share my opinions on the subject, uh, that's a whole different story. But what I will say in regards to this video is that I think the remake definitely improved on the, the puzzle solving aspect of the game. Similar to the Resident Evil 1 remake, the Resident Evil 2 remake reworks a lot of the original puzzles and creates some brand new ones. There's a lot of interest in puzzles in this game, but what I really liked was the herbicide puzzle at the end of the game. I know some RE fans prefer the old aesthetic of the original labs, and I do too to be honest, but the original didn't really have any complex level design or puzzle solving outside the police station. It was just go to Birkin's lab, pick up the key item and backtrack. The lab was mainly just picking up items outside of one or two optional puzzles. The remake's lab, however, has a very multi-layered puzzle, which fits very well into the level design. You had to first figure out the codes to unlock parts of the greenhouse, and did anyone notice that the symbols on the panel are just inverted numbers? After which you had to create the herbicide in a volume measure puzzle mini game. Next, by reading a file, you found out it needed to be cooled, so you head into the basement, figure out a way to turn the power on, before cooling it in a freezer in a nice throwback to the original after which it's ready for use. 
I love having complex multi-room puzzles in my RE games and I hope going forwards into Resident Evil 8 that Capcom continues with the harder puzzles. So much for the weed infestation. Code Veronica is a very puzzle heavy game, with some brilliant ones that will certainly test your brain. So of course one of them is going to make the list. There's a lot to choose from and many are very nostalgic to me as Code Veronica was the second RE game I ever played. The number 5 spot however goes to the Ashford family puzzle. As plain as Claire on Rockford Island, you find a large palace to explore that you will backtrack to many times in order to unlock previously inaccessible rooms. One room at the very back requires a gold key to unlock and when you go inside you find a gallery full of portraits of aristocrats. Up a few steps is an even larger painting of a young boy. Upon closer inspection you'll notice each painting has a button underneath. What to do seems obvious, push the buttons in the right order. But which order? By reading a file you'll learn that these portraits are of the Ashford family lineage, the ancestors of Alfred and Alexia, who for those who don't know are the antagonists of Code Veronica. This puzzle adds a little more backstory to these characters. I know a lot of people criticise CV for its cheesy dialogue and voice acting and I agree but I also really like the story and the little details behind its characters. Speaking of its little details, to solve this puzzle you really need to be observant to both the pictures and the file. It's difficult but definitely doable. And when you solve the puzzle you will also have to be observant again, as the vase presented to you will need to be rotated and examined, a feature I am very glad they have now brought back in the modern RE games, in order to find the real key item. This is definitely one of the harder puzzles of the game for sure. Playing CV again recently makes me wish that one day Capcom will give it the remake treatment, as I think it will benefit from it way more than 3 or the rumoured 4 remake, but you know, one can hope. If you've played Resident Evil 3 before, how much do these sounds annoy you? Yeah, I couldn't leave the water sample puzzle of this list as it's one of the most infamous puzzles in the whole franchise. I think it may be one of the most infamous puzzles in all of gaming. It always tends to be in one of those top 10 worst puzzles ever lists. I do hate it like a lot of people, it's tedious to work out but I also kind of love it. The idea of the puzzle is quite fun to make the shapes combine to form the pattern at the bottom and honestly I'd rather have a puzzle be annoying and challenging rather than too easy that I can solve in a few seconds. And that's all I can really say on this puzzle that hasn't been said before. Resident Evil 7 brought the series back to its roots. Those are the words that fans of the series will either defend or attack until their hands are sore from typing angrily at each other online. Like with the RE2 remake discussion, I'm not going to go into it, but what I will say is that Resident Evil 7 did bring more of a focus on puzzle solving back. So in that aspect, the statement is kinda true. The puzzles in this game I really enjoyed, and even though some were as easy as what RE4 had, others felt closer to what the classic RE games had. And the best example of the latter is the Happy Birthday puzzle, 
a puzzle that feels like a homage to Saw, kind of. It's found in the later half of the game when Ethan must deal with Lucas Baker and all of his deadly traps. There's actually two ways to encounter this puzzle, in the main game and in a videotape sequence where you play as Clancy from the sewers gate of footage from the intro. It's not necessary to play the videotape footage, but for first time players it'll be needed for Ethan to skip most of the puzzle, saving himself from death. The happy birthday puzzle involves one simple task, light the candle on the cake. Seems simple enough, but each time you try to take a lit candle to the cake, sprinklers douse out the flame. And so starts a multi-step puzzle that involves code breaking, balloon popping, putting your hand into a toilet, operating a freaky clown doll with a painful result, and using your head to think around all the puzzles in the room to turn the sprinklers off. And all of that just to burn to death. I guess the cake was a lie. Thankfully, Clancy's death helps Ethan survive. Maybe Lucas shouldn't have left that videotape about. I mean, he does say. And I don't do spoilers. When I think of Resident Evil 1, I think of Moonlight Sonata playing. And that's because of this memorable puzzle. Featured in both the original and the remake, this puzzle is located rather early on whilst exploring the mansion for the first time. Found in an elegant bar room with not much inside rather than an old piano. As you explore the room, or another room, depending on which version of the game you are playing, you'll find a music sheet for Moonlight Sonata. Now, like with the V-Drop puzzle, there's a few differences depending on who you play as. If you choose Jill, Ray, you picked the Piano Pro, and she plays a song like an expert. If you choose Chris, however, it seems he's more into playing the guitar. Rebecca though is here to save the day, and probably embarrassed from letting Billy complete the piano puzzle in RE0, starts practicing the tune on the piano. Little while later, if you return, she'll nail it and unlock a secret room. Inside will be a golden crest, but taking it will close down the secret door. Hmm, it seems like this is another switcheroo puzzle. In fact, this was one of the first times in Resident Evil you had to pick up a puzzle item and switch it with an almost identical object. A crest can be found in the famous dining room you pretty much start the game in, and by switching around the two crests you can reveal a key behind a clock, unless you're playing the remake and then there'll be an additional puzzle. Thinking about it now, it's strange that when Chris gets trapped that Rebecca doesn't react or try to play Moonlight Sonata again. Maybe she wanted him trapped in there? Whoa! What is it? What? Oh! Oh no! Now for some memorable mentions that almost made the list. The Night Room puzzle in RE1, very iconic, especially in the remake. The computer puzzle in the lab. The break puzzle in RE0, unless you don't like maths, but I kinda do. The statue puzzle in RE2, again iconic. The lighter puzzle in RE2, I like the way it ties into the suit of cards theme the keys and the RPD have. The time puzzle in RE3 with the three stones and clocks, again mad nostalgia for this one. The metal detector puzzle in Code Veronica that I find actually quite ingenious level design. The church puzzle in RE4 that both Leon and Ada have to solve that requires matching colour patterns together and finally the casino puzzle in RE Revelations that involves using coins in the right amount to unlock the door and also fighting some fish. And now on to number one. This puzzle is purely down to one of my earliest memories of playing RE. Even though RE3 was my first, this puzzle really had me stumped as a kid and I had such a proud moment when I finally figured it out. And that puzzle is the gallery puzzle in the RE1 and the RE1 remake. By exploring the mansion you'll find you'll need either four crests or masks, again depending on which version you're playing, to exit the mansion. They are usually found behind a puzzle or a boss fight. One of them is behind this puzzle. So as either character, Jill or Chris, you'll enter a room full of pictures, a bit like the Code Veronica puzzle, but technically this came first. As you enter you may feel like you're being watched, and then you'll probably hear the cause and notice all the zombie crows above you watching you. Eerily, they just stay there watching you. 
they won't attack unless you get the puzzle wrong. As you look at the pictures, you see that all of them are of one man during the different stages of his life, with a button under each one. The title of one of the pictures gives the clue on what to do, from cradle to grave. And so, 8 year old me, or around that age, realised that you had to press the buttons in order from birth to death. And when you hit that final button, and the painting drops off the wall to reveal the crest, and that ominous music plays, yeah I felt incredibly proud, and so began my appetite for solving puzzles in games. Then the remake came along and introduced its version of this puzzle. So it looks the same, a corridor full of paintings with crows waiting to kill you at the very first mistake you make, but when you look at the paintings you realise they are completely different. The one at the end is now of a woman, with three coloured in accessories, a crown, a bracelet and a necklace. You'll see each item in its own painting and by pressing the buttons on either side you can change the colour of said item. This version I found much easier to solve, but it's just as cool. You have to change the colour of the three items to match what's on the picture of the woman. The woman, some of you may know, is Lisa Trevor, that monster that stalks you in several parts of the game, and is the daughter of George Trevor, who built the mansion that the game takes place in. Solving this puzzle will cause the wall to move, revealing a shortcut to the cemetery and one of the death masks. Again, this puzzle is mostly number one just due to it being a puzzle I remember solving for the first time and having that aha moment when working it out. And I think that's why I like solving puzzles in games, for the mental challenge and the way your mind just clicks when you figure it out and you get that very rewarding feel. And that's it for my top 10 Resident Evil puzzles. Judging by the word count, this be the longest video I've done so far, at least since my channel reboot. There are so many puzzles in the series, even now I'm trying to think if I remembered them all in consideration for this video. So, what are some of your guys' favourite puzzles in the Resident Evil games? Do you like puzzle solving or do you prefer games without it? Let me know in the comments below. My next video hopefully won't take as long as this one to make, but I am currently working on two other channels at the moment, so it just depends on how busy things get. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one.